Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Chewy Larkbox Pro. Now the name Larkbox might sound familiar to you because Chewy released the Larkbox earlier this year and it's actually one of my favorite super tiny mini PCs. And Chewy made the claim that it was the world's smallest 4K capable mini PC and they weren't wrong about it. It actually does 4K video playback really well. But now we have the Pro version which does have an upgraded CPU and the price on this is actually a little cheaper, coming in at $179. So in this video, we're going to do a quick unboxing, we'll go over the form factor, we'll take a look at the specs, and then we'll jump right into Windows 10 because that's what comes pre-installed on the Lark box. And it actually handles it quite well for being such a tiny PC. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to receive the Lark box itself, and as you can see, it's absolutely miniature. This is a full-blown Windows 10 PC that is 4K capable. There's a few extras in here, like the mounting system that they've included. This will allow you to mount the Lark box on the back of a monitor or on a wall, basically wherever you'd like to mount it. And finally, the power supply itself. Now this is a 12 volt, 2 amp power supply, and it's USB Type-C. The Lark box is powered over USB Type-C, and unfortunately, that port on this mini PC only does power in. It will not transfer data, and it does not transfer video out. So on the front of the Lark box, we have our power button and our LED indicator. If we move around back, we have that USB Type-C. Like I mentioned, it's only used for power in, full-size HDMI, and two USB 3.0 ports. And the final ports on this box are over on the right-hand side. We have a micro SD card reader and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So when it comes to I.O., the Lark box doesn't offer much, but it's just enough to get you by with either Linux or Windows 10. So when it comes to the specs on the Larkbox Pro, we have the Intel Celeron J4125. On the original, it was the J4115. And with the 4125, all four cores can now boost up to 2.7 GHz instead of 2.4. They've kept the 6 GB of LPDDR4 and the 128 GB of storage, plus there is an M.2 slot in here, but it's only a 2242. It's one of the smaller M.2s, but it will work up to a 1 TB drive. Now, going from that 4115 to the 4125 isn't a super jump in performance, but keep in mind, the old one could only boost up to 2.5 on a single core, 2.4 on all four cores, but now we have a 300 megahertz jump on all four cores when it's boosted to 2.7. And this one is actually coming in a bit cheaper if you get it on Amazon. It's 179 as opposed to 239 for the older one on Chewy's website. Now before we jump into Windows 10, I do want to make it perfectly clear. I would not upgrade to this if you already own the Lark Box, but if you missed the boat on the Lark Box and you've been thinking about picking one up, this is definitely the one to get. Go with the Lark Box Pro as opposed to the older version. Alright, so here we are. The Lark Box Pro does come pre-installed with Windows 10 Home. It took me a little while to update everything, but I'm finally ready. I've installed a bunch of apps to test here, and as you can see, we have that J4125. 6 gigs of RAM at 2133, and the Intel UHD 600 graphics. Same graphics as the original Lark box, we just have a higher clock on that CPU. So the first thing I like to do on these mini PCs is run a quick benchmark, and I usually use Geekbench 5. Now these are definitely not meant for gaming, I could throw some 3D mark at it, but scores aren't going to be great. So I've just run Geekbench 5 on the Pro model, versus the original model. And as you can see, we do have a higher single core score, and I expect this because we have a higher clock rate, and a pretty decent boost in multi-core. Remember, this will do 300 megahertz higher on all four cores as opposed to the older version. So the Pro model will outperform the original in single core tasks and multi-core tasks. So if you wanted to pick one of these up and use it as an everyday PC, it actually works out just fine, especially given the form factor here and the price. I mean, the price really isn't that bad. You're getting a fully functional Windows 10 PC that actually works really well. So as for web browsing, it's very snappy. It does have AC Wi-Fi built in. I'm just gonna head over to the Raspberry Pi website. That's usually what I test with these mini PCs. And it loads right up. I mean, scrolling here is super smooth, and web browsing on the Larkbox Pro is a treat. I mean, it just, it works. That's basically how it is. By the way, I am using the Edge browser. If you wanted to go with Chrome, you could do that. Works just as fine, but this is already pre-installed, and uh, it's fully updated, so I figured I'd go ahead and use this. The next thing I like to test is 4K video playback from YouTube, so we'll head over there real quick. And I already got one loaded up. Make sure we're sitting at 4K. As you can see, we're at 4K. We'll turn on stats for nerds. And we will have some drop frames as soon as you buffer in. 
but overall the experience is really great with 4K on this little chip. I'm really impressed with these J4115 and 4125 chips when it comes to 4K streaming. It just works out. So 4K video playback with the Larkbox Pro is very enjoyable. And the final thing I wanted to test with some 4K video playback was Plex, and we're going to go with 4K 60, 60 megabits per second. In my settings, I'm set to maximum playback. This is running from one of my buddy's servers. Looking really nice here. 4K 60 FPS, 60 megabits per second. And I knew this was going to run great because it ran well on the original Lark box. So if you want to stream 720, 1080, or 4K from YouTube or Plex or even Netflix or Hulu, this little box is going to work just fine. Next up, we'll move over to some gaming. Here we have Overwatch. I'm at 720p, low settings, and I have locked the frame rate at 30 FPS, trying to keep that GPU and CPU usage down, even though we're still maxed out on that CPU. This is definitely not a gaming machine, but it's still pretty cool to see these games running on such a small form factor PC. Next up we have Fall Guys, and I was actually expecting a little better performance out of this one. It's not doing great with this chip, and I am at 720p, low settings. I'd say this is definitely unplayable, especially if you want to win a match. And finally, for PC gaming, we have the Windows version of Minecraft. I'm at 16 chunks, I still have fancy graphics on, and we're at a constant 60. I'm pretty sure I could take these chunks up a little bit, but it's a very playable experience on the Larkbox Pro. And of course, before I wrap this video up, I wanted to test out a little bit of emulation. We're going to go with Dreamcast, PSP, and GameCube. We'll also throw in a Wii game. For Dreamcast, I'm going to be using ReDream. I am upscaled to 1920 by 1440, and I have frame skip off. First one we'll go with is a harder one to run, and that's going to be Crazy Taxi 2. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get great performance out of this little box. And just as I thought, even upscale to 1920 by 1440 with ReDream on the Larkbox Pro, we're getting full speed here. And if we take a look at that CPU and GPU usage, there's a chance we could even upscale a little higher than this, and I'm sure that easier to run games would run at 4K, like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And I figured I'd just throw one more Dreamcast in here. We have Fighting Vipers 2, and we're at full speed. 1920 by 1440, no frame skip. Next up, we have some PSP with PPSSPP. This is Tekken 6. I'm using the DirectX 11 backend, and I'm at 3x resolution. It's running absolutely amazing. I also tested OpenGL. Performance is decent, but I'd say Vulcan is the way to go with this. Because when we move over to one of the harder to run games, it runs amazingly with Vulcan at 3x. And finally, for the emulation section, at least in this video, we have the Dolphin Emulator running a couple GameCube games and a Wii game. This is 1080 Avalanche with the Vulcan back end with the native resolution, and it's running great. So I wanted to take it up a notch, and I tested one of the harder ones to run, which is Auto Modalista. And I'm still using the Vulcan back end here. Every once in a while, I did see it dip down to around 58, but if I didn't have that frame counter up in the top left-hand corner, I would have never noticed it. This little chip here, the J4125, handles Dolphin really well. Now I'm sure there's some games I could throw at it that it wouldn't run at full speed, but it's definitely holding its own for a low-end Celeron chip. And the last one here is a Wii game using the Dolphin emulator. Vulcan back in, we have Sonic Colors. This game ran at 30 FPS on original GameCube hardware, and that's what we have here. This is fully playable. I'm really impressed with the emulation performance of the Larkbox Pro. 
So when it comes to these ultra tiny Windows 10 PCs, the Larkbox Pro is definitely one of my favorites. I was a big fan of the original Larkbox, but we do have a little more power here, and you can pick these up relatively easy from Amazon for $179. Now if you're looking for a high performance PC, this is definitely not where it's at, but if you're looking for an everyday PC that can be used for web browsing, email checking, 4K video playback, light gaming, and even emulation, this is a good little option here. While I was running all of my tests, I had this plugged into a kilowatt meter from the wall so we could take a look at total power consumption from the Larkbox Pro, and I don't think it's going to be that surprising, but this is a very low-powered unit. Idle, we average 4.6 watts. 4K video playback, 8.7. And while playing Overwatch at 720p, low settings, 18.2 watts. And by the way, I did have this set to the ultimate performance profile that you can set up with Windows 10. So in the end, I'm a big fan of the Larkbox Pro, but like I mentioned, if you already have the original Larkbox, I don't think you need to run out and upgrade to this one. I would wait for the next revision. But if you don't have the Larkbox and you've kind of been eyeballing the original, just go with the Pro. I will leave a link to Amazon in the description. They're going for $179, and you saw in this video what this box is capable of. It's not a super high-performance PC, but it'll definitely get you by as an everyday desktop and a nice little emulation setup. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Pro version of the Lark box, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.